One of the most common uses of a Windows server is as a file server. In this video, we're just going to take a look at simple file sharing in Windows 2008. Now, the premise behind all this hasn't changed much since the days of Windows 2000 or even NT4, but a lot of the screens have changed as they've added some, some wizards and they've made, tried to simplify some things, and they've also say, changed some of the default values to address some uh, security concerns that have been brought up over the years. Like it doesn't default to allowing everybody full control through the permissions. So let's take a look at setting up a simple share for our users to connect to. So I'm going to click on the start button. I'm going to go to the computer and let's go to the C drive here. Now I'm going to make a new folder here and I'm going to call this shared folder. All right. Now, what do I do with that shared folder? Well, if I want to share it out to the users on my network, I would right click on it, choose the option share, or choose properties and go over to the sharing tab. And here we see the new screens that Windows 2008 have. Now, we have the option here of, do we want to share this folder or not? Right now it's not being shared, but if I choose to share it, up it'll come up and say, okay, who do you want to sh share this with on the network? And right now we see the default would be the administrator and if we hover over that notice it tells us this is the learn it first slash administrator and they will be given an owner level permission to that now by default there's three levels here there's reader contributor and owner and we can remove anybody from the list now it's unlikely that we're just going to share out something to the administrator quite often what we might want to do is share it out to say domain users and we can add that to the list and the domain users we might allow them to be a reader which said they will have read-only access through this file share, or we could make them a contributor, which would give them read-write access to it, provided they had the appropriate permissions to the file system. But let's go ahead and share it so that domain users have contributor and the super administrator, well, they're an owner of it. And there we go. We've now shared it. And the way that our users would get to it is they would go backslash backslash win 2008 DC1 backslash shared folder and you'll see that all throughout here there's a bunch of hyperlinks to take you to various things like this would take you to so you could trigger an email to the users to tell them you just shared something here will take you to a, a utility that will show you all the shares currently on the system but we're just going to say done and we now see that this is a shared folder and it's shared folder name is there and if we click share it just shows us that we can stop sharing it or just change the permissions so maybe we wanted to add something else like domain administrators. We want to add them. Oh, we don't have a domain administrator, just domain admins grant. And then we can click that we want to add that to the list. And we can make them also co-owners. So co-owners, the domain users are the contributors, and the super administrator is the owner. And we'll just choose share. And there we go. Now, let's see how a user goes about accessing seeing that. So let's go over to a Windows XP station I have that's a member of the domain. And, oh, you know what? Let's log off as administrator. And let's log in as just a user. So I've got a user set up, just named Grant. We'll pop in the password for Grant. We'll log in. And since I've never logged into this station, it's going to do a quick little setup for me. And let's see, let's go ahead and we'll hit run. Now let's do win 2008 DC1. And if we hit enter, it'll show us what shares it's offering. Now we just shared this one called shared folder. Before, it actually had already shared because domain controllers automatically share for the purpose of login scripts and group policies. They share or create a share called netlogon and one called sysvol. But we're interested in this new one, the shared folder. And if we open it up, there's nothing in there. Well, let's see if we can create something in there. So let's see. We just created a new text document. And we can say, Grant was here. Because, well, we must have permissions to create folders in there. And, oh, let's go and rename that file, my file. All right. Now, can I create another folder? You bet. We can call this Grant's folder. And in here, we might put something like, oh, I don't know, let's put a bitmap image. Nothing in there, so let's go ahead and add some color to it. 
and we'll set up blue squiggles. There we go. And we've now created a bitmap image. Now let's see what's going on back on the server. So I'm going to flip back here to my server. And here we have this shared folder, which is physically on the C drive on the server in this shared folder. And when we open it up, we see the contents of what Grant's been putting on there from that Windows XP station. The basic idea behind a shared folder. Now, the sharing of the folders is very straightforward. And that wizard is going to accommodate a lot of what you need to do. In many ways, they've made this a lot easier in Windows 2008 to share a folder. But it may not be what exactly what you want. Because, well, as you you know, need to make adjustments and add some fine tuning, you might find this share is not enough capabilities for you. And you're going to be looking for what we used to have in the Windows 2003 and previous servers. And that's where you click on advanced sharing. And advanced sharing here allows you to have more than one share name. So I could call this alternate share. And now you'll see I have two of them and I can select each one independently. And each one could actually have its own permissions. Like I'm going to take away that and I'm going to apply that so nobody has permissions to the alternate share. But when we look at this shared folder, here we're seeing the raw permissions behind what we had before. You'll also see the more familiar terminology from Windows 2003, which was full control, change, or read. Read was read. Change was what we actually saw back here as, let's see, we had administrators having owner. Oh, there's our drop down. Hmm, looks like we might have confused this a little bit because we started to go beyond. We went into the advanced settings and it doesn't translate quite back right to this one share per folder sort of idea. But we see that we had reader, contributor, and co-owner, and those translated on our advanced sharing here to being full control, which would be owner or co-owner, change being contributor, someone who can change the contents and puts data in there, and then the read, which is read only. All right, so we now have two shares, and you'll see the other option you have here is you got the option of the, how many users can connect to it. And let's see, looks like the default is 106, is that million? Let's see, 216, 777,000, 16 million could, people can be connected at a time. So, yeah, that's a large number. You could limit that if you needed to. Uh, most of the time, we don't need to do that. The times I have limited the number is I might have said one person can be connected at a time because it was a particular piece of software that only one person could use at a time. But most of the time, leaving that default will be just fine. Or, you know, make it something practical if you like. Now, the only other thing we have on here is caching. And this just makes a recommendation to the client whether they should cache this folder or not. Only this, the files and folders that users specify will be available offline. This should be automatically cached if their client is set up to do caching or do not make these available to cache. And that's going to vary based on the type of client that's connecting. If you've got an old Windows 2000 or actually if you've got an old Windows 98 client connecting, it might not know how to read those. But if you're using XP or Vista, they're going to know exactly what to do with those recommendations if you're set up for offline files on those OSs. So the server doesn't make it offline. The client has to know, oh, yeah, I want copies of that information. And that's the basics behind sharing and even some of the advanced sharing options there. I think there's only one thing I didn't tell us about. And let me sh show you that real quick, and then we'll test it out from our XP machine. We've got these two shares, one called alternate share, one called shared folder. That was the first one we made. This was the one we said nobody has permissions to. We're going to make one more, and we're going to call this our Oh, I don't know. Let's call it uh, share me. And I'm going to put a dollar sign on the end. And when, by putting the dollar sign on the end, what that does is it's going to hide it from that list where we see all the shares. But if we know what's out there, we can actually connect to it. So let's go ahead and click OK. So we now have three different shares. Uh, we have alternate share. And if we look at permissions, nobody can do anything with that. We have shared folder, and if we look at the permissions, that's the one that gave our user Grant, because he's a member of domain users, change permissions. And then we've got this one called share me dollar sign, which denotes as it's a hidden folder uh, share that everyone has read permissions to it. 
Now let's go ahead and hit close. Now let's go to our XP station. Now, if I go here and do a refresh, Win 2008 DC1, that's the name of the server I'm connecting to, we see that there's two shares in addition to the net log on the sysfall. We have the shared folder and the alternate share. The shared folder took us in and let us build things because we had contributor permissions. The alternate share, we were denied permissions because the share permissions stopped us from actually going in there. Even though we might have had permission to the files in there, the share acts like a door. And that door can ha be configured in one of four ways for a user. It can be configured to give them no access if they're not on the list, to be read-only, so that they can issue read-only commands through there. They can't do any writes, even though we could go another way, but we just can't through the path alternate share. There could be a change or the con contributor where we can read and write things, but we might not be able to do things like change permissions. And then there is the full control or the owner or co-owner that lets us do anything we want uh, through that share. Okay, so we've got that. But what about our hidden share? Well, what did we call that? We called it, uh oh, I'm having a moment here. Let's, let's double check. We'll right click and choose properties, sharing, advanced sharing, and we see that we called it share me dollar sign. Okay, that's the problem with hidden folders. Hidden shares, you have to know what it's called. So we're going to go to share me. And if I try that all by itself, it doesn't work. It's going to time out. Because we have the dollar sign when we shared it, we also must put the dollar sign here. And look at that. We're now into share me. And I can open up the files because it's allowing my read, per, read uh, command through. But if I try to edit... It's opened it up for me, but if I try to save, I'm going to be denied because the share me path only allows read-only commands to be passed through. So, nope, we're not going to be able to do anything with that. So, what we've now done is we've shared out a folder several different ways, and we've tested some of the basic permissions. Now, Let's say that that was another drive. Let's say that was a USB drive. Can you share a USB drive? Yeah, you can. And most USB drives are formatted using the FAT file system, which only allows for uh, files to be created and deleted and things like that. FAT doesn't support any form of permissions, but the NTFS file system does support permissions. So our first level of security we encountered with our network shares was the share permission. But next, we need to look at individual file and folder permissions. Because any time that you're sharing out an NTFS volume, you're going to find that the file and folder permissions also come into play. And that's where we'll go. We're going next in the next video.